sad. Now, the question of the Lord's Supper at the time of the Reformation became a really key point of debate. It was a key point of debate, not just between uh, Protestants and, and Roman Catholics, but also between various Protestant groups. It, in fact, it became kind of the distinguishing mark of, well, the Lutheran Reformation as opposed to Zwingli's Reformation in Switzerland. So there, there are basically two sides that are being rejected in the Lutheran approach to this question. And the one is the, the Zwinglian approach. Now, Ulrich Zwingli, the Swiss reformer, taught that the Lord, in the Lord's Supper, uh, what we receive is basically just a memorial meal. We receive the, the body of Christ. Well, we receive not really the body of Christ, but we receive the wine, uh, the bread, which is a symbol of the body of Christ, and the wine, which is a symbol of, of the blood of Christ. Essentially, Zwingli interprets the, the words of institution, the phrase, this is my body, as this represents my body. Now, well, we can get into some of the details of that as we get into the text of Scripture and say, well, why did Zwingli come to that conclusion, and, and what is there to kind of defend against that conclusion? So, um, uh, on the one hand, we have the Swiss Reformation, which is in agreement with the German Reformation in many ways and in many areas in terms of critique of the church, but it was the concern of, of the Lutheran reformers that they had gone too far in rejecting what was a historic and, and ultimately biblical approach to, to the sacraments, including um, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, though dealing with baptism as well. So on the one hand, the confession is rejecting this idea that that we receive merely bread and wine as signs or symbols of of the sacrament of the altar of the Lord's Supper. So this is why uh, they say that we receive the body and blood of Christ. They are truly present is, is the, the phraseology that is used here. So it's truly present, really present. And meaning that it's not just symbolically present. It's not that the, the wine is a symbol of blood and that the bread is a symbol of body, but we receive the actual real body and blood of Jesus Christ. We receive the real body and blood for the forgiveness of sins as we partake of the sacrament of, of Holy Communion. So something real is going on here. And it's also important as we look at this and speak about what we mean by real presence to distinguish this from what ends up happening later in the Reformed tradition. So within the Reformed church, Zwingli holds to a position that's basically a memorial position. Some people have tried to argue that Zwingli didn't hold to a memorial position. There was more going on than that. I'm not convinced of that argument, but nonetheless, Zwingli held to the view that this is basically memorial. And later we have figures like Martin Bootser and then later John Calvin, who argue that there's a lot more going on than just something purely symbolic, but they're not willing to come to the conclusion that there is a real presence of Christ, a real presence of his body and blood uh, in, in this, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And so that idea is also rejected here by the language of a true and real presence. So what's the view of Calvin? What's the view of, of Bootser? Essentially, John Calvin and Martin Bootser, along with others as well, with, from within the, the Reformed tradition, they argue that there is something happening in the Lord's Supper, that there is this is not just a memorial meal. There is a real sharing in Christ. However, the sharing in Christ that happens is a sharing that is in faith and through faith, which means that for, for these figures, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, if we have faith through the work of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit mysteriously connects us to Jesus in as we partake of the Lord's Supper. But Jesus himself, according to his human nature, remains only in heaven. And we can talk about that a little bit as well as we delve into some of this. So Jesus is his human, according to his human nature, he is only in heaven. Therefore, his body and blood cannot actually be present here on the altar and in the elements of bread and wine. So the argument of the Augsburg Confession, the statements of the Augsburg Confession on this point are very clear that the real presence we are speaking of is not a presence in heaven that faith ascends to heaven and receives something elsewhere, but it is a real presence here and now in the church. We actually receive the body of Jesus in our mouths as we receive the bread. We receive the blood of Jesus in our mouths as we partake of the wine. Um, so, it, it, it is a real presence. We really receive him under the forms of bread and wine.